Now that I've got the basics of ant weight building under my belt, I thought I'd try making a spinner. In an era where compact, ground scraping bots seem to be the go-to, I figured I'd do the opposite, building something more akin to huge. To simplify the design a bit, I ended up making the robot based on the UK heavyweight Zadkill, a machine with a blade that can be used as a horizontal or sideways vertical spinner, and tall, flexible wheels. Starting there, the wheels for my robot were machined from 8th inch HDPE and measure 7 inches in diameter. These were originally going to be belt driven, but after running into weight issues I decided to just have them connected straight to the drive motors. To try and lessen the stress on those motors from impacts to the wheels, I 3D printed some flexible TPU hubs with a slot for a square nut that holds a set screw. All other plastic parts, such as the frame, legs, and wheel rods, were 3D printed out of nylon. It took a few revisions to get the frame finalized, but that's what prototypes are for. The last custom part here, the blade, comes in two flavors, symmetrical and not. Both are laser cut from 8th inch AR500 and have a radius of just over 3 inches. After months of designing and redesigning, the robot was done and ready for testing. It would be nice if the drive could be geared down a bit more, but it was still perfectly functional as is. But would the weapon prove effective in testing? Yeah, I'd say so. So with that, the robot just needed a name. Though it was based on Zad Keel, I wanted to call it something closer to huge. One trip to a thesaurus later, and Jumbo was finished. With the robot complete, I went out to the Northwest Hobby Expo in Monroe, Washington. There was all sorts of cool stuff there, from cars to planes to boats, but I was there for the combat. My first match was against Mildew, an undercutter from the builder of fellow big-wheeled bot, Huge. I'm not sure if they put the tallest ant weight against the shortest one on purpose, but it would definitely be an interesting match. Okay, so starting the match, the first thing I noticed is just how different and difficult <laughs> Jumbo was to drive. The big wheels with how slick they were, plus the gyroscopic forces, made this a lot more tricky to drive than I thought it would be. I did manage to get around to the side of Mildew here though, and right here, I managed to get my blade stuck into one of his wheels. Emphasis on stuck, because uh, we could not separate after that. So, after giving it a few seconds, they paused the match and uh, unstuck us, and we went back at it. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, a robot like this obviously very different from Stingray, something that I was not used to driving. So it. A lot of this match you're going to see is just me kind of getting used to the controls. I'm going to not be the best driver for a lot of these first few fights. But a lot of that is just me learning, uh, you know, how the robot controls and how to best handle it. You'll notice that a lot of the times... Uh, I'm not actually hitting mildew, and that's because it's so short that when the blade is pretty much anything but perpendicular to the ground, it just goes over the top of it. On the bright side, mildew is an undercutter, so it wasn't able to get a whole lot of hits on me either. So I just tried to keep the blade perpendicular to the ground. He got a good hit in on me there, but I tried to keep the blade such that it would be as low to the ground as possible. It might have been a better idea to switch out to one of my symmetrical blades because those are ever so slightly longer, but hindsight's 2020, and I was still able to get some good hits in on him. At this point, uh, I'm not really keeping track of time, I'm just trying to, like I said, get hits in on him, uh, and then this hit happens. And uh, down I go. I took a bad bounce, but things weren't going too bad up until that point. Thankfully, this tournament was double elimination, so I prepped for my next match. This would be against Barney the Bloodthirsty, a Thagomizer-styled robot. Okay, so against Barney, uh, I noticed that he's going to be doing uh, this a lot. He's going to be putting his blade in the air. When I was fighting him initially, I thought he was just uh, losing control of the robot, 
But looking back on the footage, I'm pretty sure he's trying to get the blade in the air so that he can hit my frame, which is really smart of him. Um, I didn't notice this at the time though, so I just kind of went Hail Mary and tried to get the blade pointed at him and hit him. Uh, and this was the result. Um, yeah, that, uh, that wasn't looking so good for me. I was able to get Barney near the pit though, and down he went. What can I say? The pit giveth and the pit taketh away. Well, that was unexpected, but a win's a win. To explain what happened at the end. In the exchange where my blade came off, his blade got bent out of shape, making Barney harder to control and difficult to keep out of the pit once it was near it. But what happened to my blade? Well, the bar must have been hit from behind because the heads of the screws holding the hub to the motor all sheared off, launching the weapon across the arena. Though the motor itself was still perfectly fine, the screws weren't coming out, so I swapped my spare. On top of this, I also had to re-solder a severed wire to the weapon speed controller and replace a screw that went missing from the drive motor. All this resulted in a lengthy repair job. Had I taken just a couple more minutes, I would have been disqualified. Thankfully, I got everything back together just in time for my match against Malicious Mouser, a Viper kit with a vertical spinner. Since I was facing a vert, I also swapped to straight legs, making the weapon more angled and hopefully giving me an advantage. So a big hit to start the match off, and another, which I think disabled one of his drive sides. You're going to notice I'm going to go in and then back off a couple of times. That's because after the last match, I was uh, very weary of the pit. I also heard someone say something about an exposed battery, but then it was confirmed that it was just an ESC, so I kept going. And so, um, and yeah, that, uh, that was the result of that. After my match with Barney, it was nice to have things go a bit more according to plan. On one hit, I actually did manage to cut into the battery, but thankfully not enough to pierce any of the actual cells. Between how short this fight was and how much I scrambled to get the bot ready previously, I figured I would just leave it untouched for its next fight. This would be against Snap, a well-armored lifter bot. Okay, so the strategy in this match was very much the same as against Malicious Mouser. That is, get hits in where I can, and avoid the pit at all costs. Snap being a control bot, I knew it was going to try and lure me towards the pit, maybe get its uh, lifter in between the holes in my wheels and drag me over, so that's something I had to be careful of. I also knew it was very well armored, so I was anticipating the match to go the full three minutes. But just getting hits in where I could, um, I just kept at it. Um, and then right here, uh, my blade actually managed to get stuck in one of the drive belts uh, for Snap that uh, connected the front and rear wheels. So we tried to, you know, get the robots to separate on their own and it didn't work. So they separated us and we went back at it. I noticed at this point that Snap was down a side of drive, probably from uh, the last impact. So at this point I just kinda kept going um, but I did not anticipate this. <laughs> so that was a bit disappointing, but what are you going to do? Remember how I said I left the robot untouched in between fights? This means I also forgot to retighten the set screws. Oh well, at least it was a memorable way to go out. I decided not to participate in the rumble at this event, but there were more events to be had. Though I unfortunately wasn't able to make it to Robo Games, another Crimson Bot Brawl was being hosted at WSU. The turnout for the Antweights was scarce though, so I'll just include my experience there in this video. Since there were so few Antweights entered, the bracket was replaced with a round robin. This meant I had to fight every other competitor, and my first matchup was against maybe the scariest one yet, Out of Control a bristle bot shaped like a video game controller. I was actually scheduled to fight this bot last year with Stingray, but due to electrical gremlins, they had me face someone else. I guess I couldn't escape it forever though, so I prepped Jumbo and went at it. One, okay, so you'll notice that the Crimson Bot Brawl Arena does not have a pit, which was nice for me after the last event. 
but there was still the big scary drum spinner on Out of Control. Uh, one of the pieces that came off there, that was one of the thumbsticks on Out of Control, one of the sets of bristles on the top of the robot so that it can run upside down. But I was trying to avoid the drum if possible, but I was willing to go weapon to weapon if I had to. I didn't think that the drum would be able to hit my frame, but I did know that if it hit my weapon just right, it could bend something that was not supposed to bend. So I get a decent hit in there. Out of control, still going though. So sometimes it's try and avoid the drum, sometimes it's just hit it where you can. Right here he stopped moving, so I thought maybe he was down for the count, so I backed off for the bit. But then he got back up and gave me a big hit. So I kept at it again. Big swing and a miss there, but uh, Jumbo was still perfectly fine. Still working good. And so my thought was just keep hitting him until um, maybe the gremlins come back. And you'll notice he stopped here, but after last time I learned my lesson. But then uh, one of my wheels comes off. Now, I'm still moving around here to show to the officials that, hey, I can still move, and he can't. So, you can see him uh, right here. He tries to get under the arena to try and bang the floor to get the robot unstuck. But, unfortunately, the robot isn't stuck. It's having electrical problems. So, with that, they counted him out, and I won the match. A very close match, but the electrical gremlins seemed to return for him in the end. That's not to say Jumbo wasn't effective, though. One hit nearly got to his battery. I scraped by for the win, but again had a lot of repairs to make. One motor locked up and the other came unscrewed from its mount, but at least I wasn't in as much of a rush this time. Once things were fixed up, I went into my next match against Spices. This was another Viper kit with a vert, but compared to Malicious Mouser, it had better front armor meaning I had to focus on getting to its sides and top. Despite this being a similar robot to Malicious Mouser, uh, my strategy was actually not very similar. Since there was no pit in the arena, I didn't have to worry about that, but I did have to worry about hitting the robot in specific spots, rather than just hitting it at all. You see here, I hit it on the front armor, and my whole robot was deflected for it. So I had to be careful on where I got hits in. You'll notice that during this match, I kind of sometimes rev the weapon down and then back up again. That's because the weapon is making the robot slide to one side because uh, of the vibration. I think something might have been damaged in the out of control fight that I didn't catch until after the tournament. But for the time being, I just worked with what I could. And it wasn't so bad to where I couldn't drive the robot, it just made things a little more difficult. I was able to get around to the back there, and there. And now I'm starting to get some shots in. Right now I think his weapon motor is down as well, so that helps. And you can see right there, my robot's deflected again because it was hit with the front panel. But I was still able to get some good hits in. Um, I think they were down drive side at this point. So I wasn't sure if they were still good to go or not. But they didn't tap, so I just went back at it. And their weapon went back up, so I figured, okay, fair play. You can see me here getting around to the back of them, trying to drive into that, kind of chasing the back of the robot. I 
Then right here is kind of the kill shot. The robot could still move, but it was so damaged that they tapped out. Another match won, and despite taking a couple good hits, Jumbo came out in pretty good shape. The team from Spices said their frame wasn't going to be repaired and gave it to me as a trophy, which was really nice of them. Only one robot left, Green Knee, a plastic poison kit with a metal blade attached. With its PLA blade, it managed to win the plastic ant weight division, so it definitely wasn't any slouch. Okay, so in this match, I wanted to aim dead for the center of the front of their robot. They got a good hit in my, on me there, uh, but that's what the wheels were for. My idea was if I could get dead center on the front of the robot, that's where the weapon motor mounts. And if I can get just one good hit in on that, that could disable their weapon and leave them vulnerable. And right here, I got the hit I wanted. The blade actually came off from the hub, and they decided uh, to tap out, so that was it. With that dramatic finish, Jumbo won the event. Sure, there were hardly any competitors, but it still won all its fights. I'm pretty happy with how it performed across these two events, but there's definitely still room for improvement. For example, I noticed that I could only tighten the set screws so far before the hub started bending out of shape, which probably contributed to them falling off. I'm not sure what I'll do to make new ones, whether I'll 3D print them from nylon or have them machined or just use some custom ones from Repeat Robotics, but an upgrade seems in order. Also, side note, after last year's Crimson Bot Brawl, I upgraded to a proper drive ESC and flip-flop to avoid any further reception issues. It drives much better now and can win any staring contest you put it in. Between my other robots though, I wasn't sure if I would have time to compete with it, so I gave it to my cousin. He did name it after all. <laughs>